Regularly scheduled programming will not be seen at this time in order that we may bring you this WTAE Channel 4 special presentation. Say my name, give me a great big cork. Hank Stone. Stay tuned now for sports and weather. Our time's up. So goes the news. I know before you left Fox Chapel that you wanted to say hi to all your friends. Some of you have lists, so read fast. Okay, here we go then. All together. Hi everyone, and welcome to Championship Bowling. Brought to you direct from the WTAE Studio Link. A lady from Apollo who's tired of the snow suggests we ship Joe DiNardo off to Arizona where they didn't get any. The lady would be surprised where I'd like to ship DiNardo. Your lead-ins are just about like the weather lately. Stagnant. Yeah. <laughs> but before we do anything, we ought to pause and update the news and back to the studio for that. It's the New England Pats turn to be placed under the coprescope, so let's examine them for clues to Sunday's games. Ah! This is precious. The best test for doneness is to rock, you know, rock them in the bowl. If they slide in the bowl, they're not done. If they are done, you should be able to do this. I guess the uh, Blizzard of 93 is uh, probably setting records all along the East, East Coast. And not no question about it. Here in Stony Creek Township, that's uh, right in Shanksville, where the plane went down around 10.01 this morning. Less than 60 seconds ago, first minor pulled from the shaft. That's amazing. Wow! The fifth Lombardi Trophy is making its way, being held up high by none other than Jerome Bennett. I'm Sally Wigan. Welcome to our golden anniversary. WTAE TV is 50 years old tonight a look back at our rich history memorable moments and unforgettable characters plus some things that happened behind the scenes that you never heard about until now it's all coming up right after this WTAE Channel 4 Pittsburgh's first station in high definition programming now coming this fall Channel 4 Action News in HD to Paul Shannon a great guy from the people of Pittsburgh, and uh, I was delighted, delighted to sign it. And if you turn it over, on the reverse side, inside there is a, a gold key. Oh, key. And, um, hey. This is the first time I ever had a key to my own city. Fifty years ago, Pittsburgh had just two television stations. No cable, no internet, very few choices for viewers. So adding a third station to the market was a very big deal indeed. Channel 4, WTAE, Pittsburgh. WTAE-TV first hit the Pittsburgh Airways on September 14, 1958. Franklin Snyder, the first general manager. Among the first programs, the Hank Stoll Show, described as a show similar to Saturday Night Live, only in the morning. Also, When this station went on the air in uh, 1958, in the fall, ABC was half a network. They didn't have a lot going for him. Frank was the first general manager of the station, and he had the foresight to go live with a lot of things that people weren't doing then. It was uh, Hank Stoll doing Popeye and Kanish, and uh, Paul Shannon with Adventure Time, and uh, Ricky Wirtz and the people that did the boring things here at TE. I mean, this, this station you know, was built on live programming because it didn't have much of a network, and Frank Snyder was a person that had the foresight to get all of this started. Gene Conley and Ricky Wirtz were two of the early stars at Channel 4 and both admit it wasn't always glamorous. There were no producers. I produced my own show. You produced your own show with the help of your husband. Well, he was a producer uh -huh. director, yeah. Among the early favorites, the Gene Conley show, which included interviews with some of the country's famous celebrities. Pittsburgh was the ninth largest city. Everyone came here and everyone wanted the publicity. Remember Carol Burnett in her early years? Was that last show of the season as much fun for you as it was for After all the After it was over, yes. 
Also visiting our studios, Barbara Walters. What is the greatest gratification for you, though, out of doing the Today Show? Hmm, gratifying. Just perhaps that it's a job that, that I can do. Liberace, Helen Hayes, and even Phyllis Diller. That was a turkey. I wanted her to dress the turkey. She said, I've never dressed a turkey in my life. What does it wear? <laughs> and you may remember some of the hit ABC shows at the time. The Rifleman, Donna Reed, Maverick, and of course, Ozzie and Harriet. Good morning, Pittsburgh. It's AM Pittsburgh time. AM Pittsburgh was one of the first early morning talk shows of its kind in the nation. It began in the early 70s with hosts Lynn Hines, Kathy Milton, and Al McDowell. <laughs> Welcome aboard this morning. You Thank got up you. early to be here with us after a fabulous show last well, night. Well, you're very kind to say that, but uh, I just wanted to, to say how nice it is to be back. The late 80s and early 90s saw a resurgence in local programming. Many of you may remember or were a part of the Emmy Award-winning <laughs> Pittsburgh's Talking, hosted by Ann Devlin. Once I got this, once I got that, I was in. <laughs> and it was Ann Devlin who introduced us to an 11-year-old Christina Aguilera. Are you ready? Okay, some of you have lists, so read fast. WTAE okay, Channel then. 4 also okay. has a strong history of children's programming. Remember racing home from school just in time to catch Nosmo King, the Three Stooges, and the magic sword of Paul Shannon's Adventure Time? And looking through our guest book here reminds me of all the good times we've had, the things we've seen, and the people, young and old, that we've met. Paul Shannon and actually had an impact on the careers of the Three Stooges. And the voice of the Steelers, Bill Hillgrove, remembers it all like it was yesterday. When I drove the station wagon, Paul Shannon said, go to the Holiday House and pick up the Three Stooges. And I brought them to the station. And they had me laughing the whole way from Monroeville to Chandler. They were really funny. Oh my gosh, were they funny. I mean, they just never stopped. And they were this big. Mo was in the back seat with Larry, and Curly Joe sat next to me, and I drove them right here for the Paul Shannon show. Paul probably was instrumental in their great rebirth, because he was one of the first guys to start playing their old clips on his uh, afternoon show, and they uh, were forever thankful. Um, he was one of the keys to the resurgence of their careers. Boys and girls, today I'd like to tell you a very interesting story. For the younger ones, there was Romper Room. Janie Vance was the original host of Romper Room, followed by Jan Bonner. These were programs done live with studio audiences. As many as 10,000 children crossed the bridge on the Ricky and Copper show. Many Happy Pittsburgh birthday. kids also celebrated their birthdays with Ricky Wirtz and her dog Copper. I came into work every day to a birthday party with eight kids. The and they were so time. happy. Okay, a great big hi for everybody, Janet. Hi! Lots of smiles in front of the camera, but behind the scenes, some practical jokers. She would pull jokes out of the stump, but Nick Perry, what a rascal. He really was. He would put risque jokes into the stump. And of course, this was all live, no rehearsal. We had 30 seconds between live shows in the studio. I'd find rubber vomit. There could be snakes, there were spiders stuck to the side, and I'd have to reach in there through all of that and get the toy. Won't you gather round? By the late 80s, some of you who crossed that bridge on the Ricky and Copper show are now bringing your own children to the set of Capelli and Company. You smiling? Happy together, singing a song with you. Bowling was big in the 60s and 70s. Nick Perry, who hosted championship bowling, was also called upon to host the hottest game show in town back then. Bowling for Dollars. A winning combination of amateur bowlers and an occasional guest celebrity. I, I just want to say this is a thrill for me. I remember watching you on Channel 16 and Channel 3. You used to peek up over the top of my playpen. Uh, it's really a... Th it's... A thrill for all of us, Billy. Up next, 
one of WTAE-TV's most enduring personalities. Myron Cope will be right back. You know, rock them in the bowl. If they slide in the bowl, they're not done. If they are done, you should be able to do this. <laughs> Welcome back. As WTAE-TV celebrates 50 years, among the many talented individuals who delivered the news and sports here at WTAE-TV, one man stood out. Not for his looks, but for his voice. And Myron Cope used that voice to weave his very special sports magic. Mm, ah, this is precious. He we was made for TV. Holy Moses. And radio. But if you asked him, he was first and foremost a writer, newspaper man, freelancer for the Saturday Evening Post and Sports Illustrated. Then in 1970, the Steelers called, and Myron answered, with one condition. In those days, you see, broadcasters, almost without exception, rode the fence. So uh, I said, uh, if I'm going to do the games, i got to tell you right now uh, that if the ball club is doing good, I'll be thrilled in the broadcast because I'm a fan, too. I said, if the ball club is out doing lousy, stinking up the joint, I'm going to say in a broadcast, these guys are stinking out the joint. Oh, he had to go up for that football. He had tough single coverage with help coming. In a sports crazy town, the natural progression was for Myron to move to sports talk. Myron Cope on sports. Sam, do you got Cope here? He became a feisty fixture on our sister station, 1250 WTAE Radio. I wanted to do it uh, just as if I were a kid again with the other kids standing on the corner in front of the neighborhood drugstore arguing about sports. That's those Broncos there, just Broncos. His radio wackiness was TV magic, and Myron's commentaries became an integral part of the WTAE TV sports scene. It was there that he unveiled that terry cloth piece of genius. What is this miracle we behold? What is the textile that rises from the coproscope? Egads, tis the terrible towel. But Myron's TV career wasn't defined by Christmas carols and coproscopes. Whether leading the Pirates toward a pennant or the Steelers toward a Super Bowl, Myron went MTV on WTAE TV. MC, take it from MC. Can't touch this. Of course not. You can bet your green weenie you can't. Can't touch this. Bobby Bo, you put on a show. Take a Bobby Bo over two ho shows. You can't touch this. Steeler mania, there's nothing zany. If fans go bonkers, you can hear them in yonkers. Eat your kielbasa, drink your brewski. Drink the Wolsavsky, we've got the last lapsky. Move with them, stand with them. And if they're good, they'll cover your fancy. Jerome Bettis, Jerome Bettis, he is sure he's the real thing. He ain't no head of lettuce. He is one tough cuss all aboard a big bus. Boy, Jerome Bettis. In December of last year, Myron told us all that he would, in fact, try and conquer them on if Oakland beat Cincinnati. And he well, wasn't above a stunt like this, fulfilling a bet Myron's made night. on the Why? air. And I'll tell you, that Menonga hang of that filth in there, it's foul. So what I need to clean me off is a terrible towel. Well, we, we happen to have one just like that right here. Right there, a terrible, terrible towel. King of the promos, yes. But he was a serious journalist. And as friend and fellow broadcaster Billy Hillgrove remembers, a creature of entertaining habits. <laughs> well, he'd come in and do his TV commentary, and then he had to get ready for his radio show. And uh, his radio show started at 6 o'clock, so he'd leave the TV studio go across the street to his office at the Holiday Inn, woodshed all of his copy, and then, like clockwork, we could set our watches by Myron Cope coming into the sports department at 10 minutes to 6 p.m., and the one phrase was never changed. Anything late popping, gents. His dear friend, former Steelers communications director Joe Gordon, also remembers Myron as the most creative person he has ever known. Yeah, within a matter of 10 minutes, he'd be sitting in my office on a Sunday morning before a game and get an idea. He said, oh, I'm on. You know, and he, he would say, wait till you see this. And in 10 minutes, he would have a little ditty written on uh, some aspect of the game. And during those Super Bowl years, his inside information on all aspects of the game was unrivaled. He probably had more confidential information than the coaches, the Rooney, the staff, including me, uh, because the players had such great confidence in him, and they enjoyed his company. 
they would socialize with them and they knew that uh, whatever took place at a party stayed at that party as far as Myron was concerned. Myron was just darned good at what he did. It won him a spot in the Pro Football Hall of Fame after he retired and drew tributes from network sports commentators like the late, great Dick Schaap, who helped roast Myron back in 1993 right here in the WTAE TV studios. Besides wanting to pay honor to, to Myron as a writer and wishing like Breslin that he would do more of it, uh, I want to thank him very, very much for his help to me in this business because he's the first person who gave me diction lessons. Uh, in for radio and television. Uh, but Myron sorry. never forgot who put him in the lofty position he held, and still holds, even in death. Cope had the ability to relate to the fans like no other broadcaster in the history of the city. And you can make that argument about Bob Prince and maybe Mike Lang with the Penguins, uh, but nobody, nobody grabbed the fan and took him under his wing like Cope. And so therefore, he became a part of not only them, but a part of their households, a part of their everyday routines, a part of their social schedule. You know, it was all the, the world according to Myron. And for some of us, it still is. We do miss him so. Still ahead, the first days of WTAE News, the anchor team that put this station on the map, and some secrets revealed about what you didn't see on the air. The news I'll give him a start, he'll go crazy and fall apart and buy every other cow at the Kmart. Honey, you had an unusual experience with a bee on the ball in Phoenix, and uh, I wonder if you might just uh, elaborate a little bit on what happened there. Well, uh, I'm sure will, I had uh... Welcome back, and thanks for joining us as WTAE celebrates 50 years. When WTAE TV first went on the air back on September 14th, 1958, its news department was just learning its way in the broadcasting world, and to keep up, it had to learn fast. In the beginning, it was News and Views with John B. Hughes, just a daily 15-minute newscast. We wrote all of our own news. The news portion of the 15 minutes was probably only about six minutes, so therefore, you know, you didn't have big, long stories. You had an intro, an outro, and then a little film piece in the middle. And here is Four Star News. You may remember Four Star News. Dave Murray came to WTAE as our first news director and 11 p.m. anchor. Thank you now for sports and weather. Our time is up. So goes the news. Dave Murray was probably the most talented news person who ever walked. We talk about no teleprompters. Dave didn't need one. He would come into the studio. He would rattle off the news straight into that camera. No prompters, no notes. It was all up here. The news department quickly grew. Eleanor Shano became Pittsburgh's first female general assignments TV news reporter. News was all shot on film. You shot your story. Then you had to bring it back, and we would soup the film, edit the story. And there was so much less pressure on the reporters back then. Because now, I mean, you've got to think on your feet. You have to write. You have to do it. You're doing live shots. Live shots. My gosh, we never even dreamed of such a thing. Marlon was given a job. In the mid-60s, you might recall the news team of Carl Ide and Ed Conway. Two historic manuscripts and two treasured relics have been stolen from the Vatican Library. Also in the 60s, the switch from black and white to color television. We were told that some of us would lose our jobs because maybe we would not look so good in color. Can you believe that? For all the news, sports and weather, it's Paul Long, Don Cannon. As the 1960s came to a close, a new news team emerged and changed the face of WTAE. A team assembled by then general manager John G. Conamikes. And I think my biggest contribution is hiring Paul Long, Don Cannon, Joe DiNardo to come to the rebuilding of this station and news because our news image was, was not very good. We didn't have a lot going. In a vo very short period of time, we were very, very competitive and were winning some of the newscasts. Over about a four-year period, we totally transformed what was going on at the station. He asked me what, uh, what ideas I had. Well, I said, uh, I'd like to see your weatherman be uh, Joe DiNardo 
I think he could be had now, or words to that effect. But uh, he says, we've been talking to him. He's playing hard to get. And I gave him some more tips on how to tie the rope around Donardo and drag him in here feet first. Don Cannon was on a UHF station in Chicago at the time. John looked at his work, and he liked it, and he hired him. So we went on, I think it was the first Monday in May and, uh, of 1970, and there was a big promotional campaign along Donardo and so forth, and I thought, man, oh no, man, if this doesn't work, not only am I in trouble and Long's in trouble, but what is it going to do to Connor Mike's? You know, I was scared to death the first night. I said, this is a big deal. And we went on the air, and then uh, the rest was history. History indeed. In the decade of the 70s, Long, Cannon, and Donardo came to personify Channel 4 Action News. Paul Long was the first to be hired, a stickler for accuracy and economy of language. Paul used to like to write. He wanted to write a lot of his stories. And... Uh, we got to the point we didn't want him to do that because he'd have his own feeling on how something should happen. I mean, it was a, he was a pilot, and there's a story about uh, uh, an airliner had this crash with this private plane. And for Paul to write the story, it looked like it was all the fault of the airliner <laughs> and nothing to do with the private plane that did it. And the way the story came out was just awful. And we said, well, you know, we can't let Paul <laughs> write any more stories. We'll just have him deliver it. But, uh, and he was a great writer. President Reagan and Soviet leader Gorbachev... Adam Lynch joined WTAE in 1980, anchoring several newscasts over the years, finally making the morning show a Pittsburgh staple. When I came in, it wasn't like a stranger, because they knew who I was from 15 years on the air at 11, and I had personal friendship with all of them anyway, Pap and I and, uh, and Don and Joe. So they immediately treated me with, well, not just with open arms coming in, but that level of glad you're here, respect, that made me feel very good. I also had the privilege of working alongside these men. They were fabulous, brilliant men, welcoming and funny. I mean, cracking up, sometimes probably taking it too far on the air because it's the way you would behave at a party or in the newsroom. We just brought it onto the set. It was a grand time. It was a grand, grand time. Technology enhanced the coverage. Satellite, videotape, microwave trucks allowed for live coverage from anywhere. Channel 4 Action News is everywhere became the slogan, and news became the station's bread and butter. And all of that technology and all of our skills were tested on that awful day in September of 2001. I, for instance, was doing the most mundane thing. I, I, I was at the opening of Krispy Kreme in Cranberry Township. I would never have been here, but I had two boxes of donuts, and I decided I wanted to bring them to the newsroom, and then I was going to go home. And on my way on the turnpike here, someone called me and said, you know, two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center. And so I rushed in here. Everybody was in the assistant news director's office, standing there transfixed and, you know, just horrified. Then everything went into motion. When the towers collapsed, all the different managers started assigning people to New York or go here, go there, and then all of a sudden someone screamed from the assignments desk, a plane has crashed in Somerset County. I wasn't even dressed to go on the set, and I grabbed someone's jacket, I jumped United on the United set Lines in Studio C, and, also and it began. The, the flight left Newark. Mike Clark and Michelle Wright headed immediately to Somerset County. We got there, and it was so different than the images we were seeing from New York. It was a beautiful day, it was a beautiful cornfield, and we stood there knowing what had just happened. It was just very somber and quiet, and we were kind of numb. Our children will be studying this. Uh, our grandchildren will be learning about this moment in history. And we were and literally talents, broadcasting American history that day. Action News would return to Somerset County 10 months later, when a group of coal miners became trapped. And the night they were finally rescued was, well, unforgettable. We were listening just with our earpieces. We couldn't see. And finally, he came out saying, they're all alive. They're all down there. And I will never, ever forget that moment. 
it's so hard to describe and so often viewers come up to me and will tell me that they stayed up all night with us watching. I'll never forget that moment standing next to Michelle and we both, yes, and we put our arms around each other and embraced and I remember the cameraman, I looked back at him and he had tears streaming down his face as the capsules were going down into the mine to pull the men up one by one. And we were able to talk over the most amazing video of these men, so tired, so filthy, so exhausted and so grateful, coming up from that hell that they were in. I'll never experience anything like that in my life. Over the years, Channel 4 Action News has won numerous awards for excellence in news coverage and Team 4 Investigations. After new revelations about Reporter Jim Parsons' investigation of, of the money. Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency eventually led to widespread changes. And Paul Van Osdal broke a story which made headlines nationwide. The Navy's own website shows they're aware of problems with the T-45. Councilman, Councilman, Jim Parsons, Councilman. But not everyone was happy or willing to talk when Team Council, 4 came calling. You questions if you're under the age of Action News also the led the way with a full-time medical editor, Marilyn Brooks, who spearheaded the station's Healthy for Life campaign. Pittsburgh is a sports town, so coverage of the Steelers, Pens, Pirates, and Panthers, along with high school sports, has been an important element in Channel 4 news coverage. And sometimes those worlds collide. I had done the morning news that day, everything went well, and I was on my way out the door when one of our producers stopped me and said, Andrew, uh, can you come over here and take a look at something? And I said, uh, sure, no problem. And from Sky 4, uh, there was a shot of this um, accident scene. Well, as you all know, Ben Roethlisberger had that motorcycle crash that, that day. Next thing I know, I'm on the air for the next three hours doing live coverage of this accident and what had taken place and what was going on. And Thank goodness I had 10 years of sports knowledge of covering the Steelers because it really helped me in, in covering a story that we all remember. Another memorable news slash sports story, the demolition of Three Rivers Stadium. So we were up there on one of the inclines and the best part was everybody had made fun of me because I had brought a construction mask to put over that hooked behind my ears and was holding on to it. And everybody said, what do you need that for? Well, the next thing you know, Three Rivers comes tumbling down, and the wind was supposed to take all the dust and debris and all that fun stuff someplace else, straight over across the point, and then straight up to Mount Washington. So everybody went scrambling, and I had to stand there, which was fine at that point, with the dust mask on, and <laughs> continue reporting. As Pittsburgh teams reached for championships, Channel 4 was there for the ride. Bob Prince was a part of this sports team in 1979 when the Pirates took on the Orioles in the World Series. Game one was postponed because of bad weather in Baltimore, but that didn't deter our sports team. I remember the piece that he uh, concocted uh, where he and John Steigerwald and I donned these uh, skimpy bathing suits, sat poolside okay, a with a I'm tray of uh, our favorite five. beer, and we talked in. about everything, right, I got the bunting, pinch running, the whole I bit. We never acknowledged the weather. And there were snowflakes this big just going past us onto our legs. And I'll never forget uh, leaving there. I was, you know, pretty well padded, but those two skinny guys, they were blue by the time we finished the piece. You know why? Because I laughed at the first two takes. I couldn't get through a whole take without bursting out laughing. <laughs> More recently, Super Bowl 40, when the Steelers finally got their one for the thumb. I remember walking through the streets of Detroit and seeing so many Steeler fans. It was like a, a home game. And then I remember sitting next to Sally Wigan uh, right before kickoff, and I kind of looked at her and she looked at me, and we kind of said to each other, we're at the Super Bowl right now. And you watch it on television your whole life, but to actually be there, and know that the winner of this game is going to be the world champions of professional football, there's no better feeling. And then I remember at the end of the game, walking into the locker room, it was like no other locker room I'd been in before in my life. The celebrations were just great. Guys were coming up to me, clapping me on the back, shaking hands. And the best part, actually, of that entire experience wasn't even the game or the celebration at Ford Field. It was back here in Pittsburgh and the parade and to see a quarter million people just uh, having the time of their lives. Uh, that meant more to me and that's more of what I remember than the actual game and post-game celebration itself. Fun days indeed. Equally fun to watch. Some of those old promotional campaigns we've been airing over the last few weeks. 
You get a chance to see them again next. Over the years, WTAE has launched many different promotional campaigns, some serious, some not so much. And those are the ones we want to show you now. We're certain they'll bring a smile to your face. There's something almost frightening about the accuracy of Joe Donato's forecasts. It does make you wonder sometimes just how he does it. But after all, Joe's secret is nothing more than being Pittsburgh's most experienced meteorologist. Thunderstorm. And that's what makes Joe Donato's forecasts really super. Some even say... Call me, Igor. Supernatural. We'll be there. Action news is everywhere. From the warm and friendly city, where three rivers flow and everywhere. We're always there. Action news is everywhere, everywhere. Once in a while, Corley Paul. Hi, Don. You find a couple of guys who just naturally work well together, who complement each other in every way. Like Paul Long and Don Cannon. A natural sort of communication you just don't find every day. So it's no accident that more people are switching to Action News. Good evening, Good evening. Paul Long and Don Cannon. Good evening, Good evening Paul. Pittsburgh's choice. <laughs> naturally. Have you ever had morning, Paul? One of those days Hi, Don. when nothing goes right, sometimes the most natural of partners get a little off in their timing. Even Paul Long and Don Cannon can find their finely tuned teamwork slightly off target. But when you're Pittsburgh's number one news team, you can always pull your act together when it really counts. Good evening, I'm Paul Long. And I'm Don Cannon. Pittsburgh's first choice for news. Well, Paul, it's a Naturally. Makes no difference where I go, you're the best hometown I know. Hello, Pittsburgh. Hello, Pittsburgh. Channel 4 loves you. Makes no difference where I go, you're the best hometown I know. Hello, Pittsburgh. Hello, Pittsburgh. Channel 4 loves you. And Don Cannon has that story. When Don Cannon first joined our Action News team, we weren't ready for his popular reception. First came the phone calls, then the letters. Soon the fans were flocking to the studio. The enthusiasm of some of his zealous admirers knew no bounds. Mr. Cannon, could you get me Paul Long's autograph? Don Cannon, one of the two most popular anchormen in Pittsburgh. When you get that six o'clock hunger to know what's happening. Nice to see you. It's nice to know there's a place where you can catch up on everything. Hi. Find out what was special today and how things will turn out tomorrow. That's how it is with Action News at 6. Every night at 6, our Channel 4 news team serves up plenty of food for thought and still leaves you with a good feeling. Join us for Action News at 6. It really hits the spot. Joe said it would. That has to be one of my favorites. But it wasn't always for Joe. Up next, he explains why, as he recounts his incredible career on Pittsburgh television.
Welcome back as WTAE celebrates 50 years. This station has always prided itself on its weather coverage. And to this day, we continue to devote considerable effort and resources to bringing you the most accurate, dependable forecast. And for accuracy and dependability, you could do no better than Joe DiNardo. For Joe, it started with an interview at an airport in 1969 with the then manager of WTAE TV. John G. Conamite. And he said, I want to talk to you. I said, fine. He said, uh, let's meet out near the airport. He said, you know any place? I said, yeah, we'll meet at Hard Johnson's. So we met at Hard Johnson's. And we're sitting there talking, having a nice conversation, and uh, pilots from the airport would be going by, coming in for lunch, breakfast, what have you. And they'd all stop. And they'd say, Donardo, great job, great job. He said, you're the only weather we watch. He says, you tell it like it is. He says, it's all about that. Winds aloft, the whole ball. And after a while, Connor Mike, he looks at me and he said, I think I'm being set up. <laughs> but John G. Connor Mike's remembers another pilot. And a pilot came in and said to Joe, he says, my God, Joe, he says, that weather. He says, what kind of weather do you need to fly in? It was absolutely awful out there. And Joe said, well, for me to fly, he says, I'll tell you what I do. I said, I've got a powder blue piece of paper with a hole in the middle. And he says, and I go outside and I hold it against the sky. If it matches, I fly. If it doesn't, I don't go in the air. And I said, and you're a guy that I want to give a lot of money to come and work at Channel 4, if that's the kind of answers we get. But, uh, you know, that was the start of it. The start of Long, DiNardo, and Cannon. John said uh, to Paul and I, he said, uh, we've got another anchor coming in, bright, young, energetic male. He says, he's going to be here in about another month. We're going to put him on the air. And it was Don Cannon, came out of Chicago. What right? was your nickname for him? <laughs> I called him Boom Boom. <laughs> Why? Well, Cannon, I mean, yeah. Oh, Boom Boom, boom Cannon? Boom Boom, boom Cannon, yeah. Here's kind of messed up. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, nice. It's the widest part in Allegheny County. Joe was a real jokester. He made hay with Paul's habit of leaving his keys in the ignition and moved Paul's car one night. We go do the 11 o'clock news. <laughs> We're done. Paul came out before me, and I, I'm taking my time, leisurely coming out of the building. And I come out of the building, open door, and I said, oh, my God, there's Paul walking up and down. I, I, said, I remember what I did to his car. I said, what are you doing, Pat? And he says, I'm looking for my car. I said, I think you have it down there in the lower lot. So he turns around, goes back down in the lower lot, and while he does that, I run up here at the top, get in his car, back it out, bring it down, and put it on the other side of my car. So I said, Paul. And he comes up, and I says, there it is right there. He says, oh. He goes over, gets in the car, backs it up, and takes off. Had no idea what happened. And Joe got Don on another snowy night when their look-alike cars were both covered in white. After the 11 o'clock news, 11.30, we're walking out, and there's Don there sweeping the uh, snow off of the car. You know, and we had a broom down there, especially for that. He says, I'll give you this broom as soon as I'm done. And I said, no problem. He keeps sweeping. He's all done. He says, here you are. I said, no, no, no. I reached in my pocket. I gave him a $5 bill. He said, what's that for? I said, thanks for cleaning my car. Got in the car, started it up, and took off. He was livid. With Billy Hillgrove, Joe remembers one fourth of July when both were working the 6 o'clock news and decided to find a picnic to crash. One day I said, Billy, come on, we're going to do something. He said, what? We get in my car, and we're cruising down Ardmore Boulevard in Forest Hills. Took a right and go up on the hill there, and there's all these homes up there. And put the window down. And I said, now, Billy, if you smell something that smells really good, let me know. We get in Joe's car. He drives down to Swissvale. We drive along. We see a tent in a yard and cars parked. We get out of the car. Hey, Joe DiNardo, Bill Hillgrove, come on. And we enjoyed a spectacular cookout. And guess what? It didn't cost us a dime. I bet it didn't. <laughs> Temperature through that area. And there was another 4th of July when Joe went against his better judgment and paid for it. So I put out partly cloudy, 75 degrees. But I'm looking at this thing and I said, well, I said, ah, we'll go partly cloudy, 75. The next day, Paul Long says to me, congratulations. I had one and a half inches of partly cloudy land on my driveway. And we had an inch and a half of rain that day. I'll never forget it. That was the biggest bomb I ever had, I think. They never let you forget that? Never, never. So on record, this is the most we've ever gotten. Most His two biggest weather hours. stories, right. the blizzard of March 1993 and the floods of Ivan in September 2004. 
It was about noontime, and I came into the uh, newsroom, went up to the news director. I said, we got a problem. He said, what's that? I said, you know how you always want me to go on the air? And I said, I don't have anything to say going early I said, on the news. I said, well, today I've got something to say. He said, what's the matter? I said, we're going to get so much rain. We've never had this much rain before in the history of Pittsburgh. Joe said it would, the name of a promotional slogan you still hear around town. It wasn't one of Joe's favorites because it put a lot of pressure on him to not be wrong. 22 years of school visits, a half a million children touched. And he was the face of Project Bundle Up, with thousands of needy people getting warm winter clothes. A job well done, yeah, but more than a job for Joe. This is the next best thing to my family, is the family I had here, the work ethic that we developed, and all the people that I met here, and the general public. It's just something that I'll never forget. And we'll never forget you, Joe. So what can you, the viewer, expect from WTAE in the next 50 years? We'll tell you, coming up. Channel 4 Action News in high definition, coming soon. On February 1st, 1999, WTAE was the first Pittsburgh station to begin broadcasting in high definition. A big change then, and even more changes are coming. Probably the biggest change to take place is coming in a matter of weeks when Channel 4 Action News switches to high definition TV. There is a difference. There is a big difference. It's uh, almost the difference of when we went from black and white to color. Really? Uh, because you know, the HD sets are just coming and coming and coming and coming, and hardly anyone's buying a set now that's. Uh, but it's not just an HD a picture. Set. It's the quality of the picture. I used to kid Donardo. I said, the day we go HD, you're out of business. And they see all the pock marks on your face. I said, you're, you're done. You see every blemish. You take your news set here. I mean, any imperfection on that news set shows up on HD. The, the, the pictures are spectacular. Viewers have more choices than ever. So where does that leave local television? Local television news will never go away. It's the one thing that we offer that none of the cable systems can do that. Uh, the cable network can give you national news, but local news is the heartbeat of the free over-the-air broadcasters and those that do it the best and our broadcast group including WT has a great reputation in how we do news are the ones that are going to make out the best going down the road so from that point of view you know things look real good and WTAE TV president and general manager Rick Henry says the way you get information from Channel 4 Action News will continue to evolve we've created newscasts here for 50 years and the the form and the presentation has changed dramatically what's happening with technology today is it's being delivered to people in so many different ways it's true. today you can get our news content from channel 4 action news on the internet we provide uh, mobile service for your mobile device. And you can together. watch weather, weather and traffic on a 24-hour basis now. Anyone it's just marvelous. It's very, very exciting. The pictures are going to get better, the sound is going to get better, and there's going to be more local content for people. The technology is exciting, but... What really, really counts is the commitment of the people who create the content. And I'm very proud of the group here at Channel 4 who, for years, has created terrific local news and strives with excellence to make it better and better every single day. So tonight we celebrate 50 years of great TV and look ahead to 50 more with a grateful nod toward you, our viewers. And most importantly, we should thank our viewers because they've grown up together with us and they've made Channel 4 what it is today. We've always prided ourselves in listening as carefully as we can to what our viewers have to say, what they think, and we try to react to that in a positive way, and I think we have, and I think they've been a big part of making Channel 4 what it has been over the last 50 years. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to you tuning in again tomorrow, and hopefully for the next 50 years. I'm Sally Wigan, Channel 4 Action News. Four's a poppin', four's a poppin', dial fun. Okay, let's clean up. Let's clean up. Bye, thank you very much. See you.